The European Green Deal is Europe's new growth strategy. We have to act now. The European Commission has prepared three concrete actions that will offer a strong basis for the New Deal. I want Europe to become the first climate neutral continent in the world by 2050. Real benefits include zero pollution, affordable and secure energy, smarter transport and high quality food. A Just Transition Fund will leverage public and private money including uh, with the help of the European Investment Bank. All these will contribute to a global green deal. No one will be left behind. We will deliver a sustainable Europe investment plan. Our one trillion euro of investment would give investors confidence to make long-term decisions on environmentally responsible projects. This will mean new jobs, a cleaner environment, and a better quality of life for people. We Europeans are ready. Good afternoon, dear friends. Uh, my name is Angelina Davidova, and I'm uh, the moderator of this session. This session is devoted uh, to the activities um, of uh, civil initiatives and uh, NGOs. This is day three of uh, EU-Russia Climate uh, Conference. Um, it is uh, organized um, by uh, Sedek of uh, Skolkovo and uh, representation of the European Union and the Russian Federation. You've been attending different sessions. You've been participating the activities of those uh, sessions. You've been listening to many uh, Russian experts as well as European experts. Uh, indeed, uh, we've been uh, uh, witnessing wonderful conversations um, with the participation of government entities, businesses, NGOs. Now it is time to talk with representatives from NGOs as well as representatives from civil initiatives. Uh, from Russia and uh, from Europe. Uh, we have several wonderful participants uh, at this uh, panel. And by the way, we are going to work uh, uh, during the next uh, two hours. Um, and uh, it is presumed that I'm going to ask several questions uh, to our speakers, and then uh, we will open uh, the panel, the entire panel, to your questions. Um, so, uh, who... Um, are participating. Uh, Rolf uh, uh, Fuchs, uh, Director of uh, the uh, Center for Liberal Modernity. Welcome, Rolf. Uh, Mikhail Babenko, Director of the Green Economy Program by uh, WWF. Um, hello. Ksenia Vahrusheva, um, uh, she represents uh, the Bellona Environmental uh, uh, watch uh, Center, Yelena Sakirko, uh, Greenpeace, yes, hello, Lubov uh, Odzial, um, uh, she is the president of the Association of Indigenous uh, People, uh, she comes from uh, Habarovsk region, Eduard Batotsirenov um, uh, represents uh, the uh, Buryat National Association uh, uh, of Baikal. Darius uh, Dipka, European uh, Roundtable uh, on um, Climate Change. Uh, Olga Kaspar, German Watch. Uh, good morning from Berlin, uh, by the way. Good morning from St. Petersburg. Uh, Eduard Batotserenov, uh, Buryatsk Regional uh, Baikal Association. Hello. Yes, nice having you here. Arshak Makichan, climate activist, uh, coordinator of the Fridays for Future uh, movement in uh, Russia. And we have Darius Dipka here as well. Uh, 
uh, European Round Table on Climate Change. Um, so I would like uh, to address the following question to all our participants. Uh, uh, several initiatives, um, NGOs, so are very keen in terms of uh, climate, climate change. They work in different formats. Uh, for instance, uh, some uh, are involved in analytics. Uh, some um, um, are uh, involved in a uh, education, uh, some are involved in media activities. There's a lot of uh, work. Um, in your opinion, what about NGOs uh, right now? I think of your own context, Russian context or European context, uh, context to be more precise. Uh, what is your experience uh, and uh, what NGOs uh, could do better in uh, larger quantities, perhaps uh, more uh, intensively? So, in a nutshell, uh, what uh, uh, civil society organizations, civil society organizations do already uh, have achieved and what could be done in a different way, so to say. And we are very much interested in your context. Uh, we would like to hear out uh, your speeches and I would like to give the floor to Mikhail Babenko. Please, Mikhail, the floor is yours. Um, yes. uh, good afternoon, dear colleagues. Um, uh, thank you very much, Angelina. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that, and I'm speaking uh, of the Russian context, I would like to expand uh, this uh, subject. Uh, and uh, in addition to uh, climate, I would add environmental issues. Um, it is environmental pollution, first of all. Unfortunately, such uh, issues uh, are very relevant uh, for many of us. And we realize that uh, climate... Uh, related and environmental issues um, come together. And speaking of uh, green growth, uh, well, the mechanisms uh, that uh, are proposed by our European uh, my colleagues, uh, Green Deal, uh, for instance, uh, in the Russian context, uh, such initi initiatives are not sufficient. And uh, speaking of uh, what uh, we do, well, we do a lot and um, uh, roughly speaking, uh, in terms of climate, uh, we raise awareness. We raise awareness. Um, uh, what do I mean? Uh, we educate uh, uh, younger people, different generations of people. We educate businesses and government officials. Um, because uh, many things depend uh, on what type of decisions are made at uh, governmental levels. Um, and and uh, it's very important uh, to frame uh, and formulate the uh, problem properly in order to find a proper solution. So that is uh, one major area that we focus on. Another major area of our concentration um, is business related. Uh, we uh, discuss things uh, with the uh, businesses. Um, let me put it this way. Um, activists, um, um, environmental and climate activists uh, are not against uh, economic growth. Uh, moreover, many uh, problems that we are facing in our society, we can avoid uh, in an easy manner if, of course, we maintain dialogue with all the stakeholders. And that during the last uh, two years, uh, we've seen uh, quite interesting stories when a project uh, was stopped uh, uh, right before the launch. Uh, why? Because uh, additional uh, risks um, had not been uh, uh, calculated uh, risks uh, for the local residents uh, and also green growth um, uh, it pays for itself uh, we're talking about uh, creating new business opportunity we're talking about inclusive uh, growth of economy we're talking about new technologies uh, the third major area we are focusing on is um um, uh, our relations uh, with NGOs in the regions, uh, NGOs as well as uh, activists, individual activists. Um, uh, we promote the environmental, um, the environmental um, uh, policies, uh, for instance. Uh, we enlighten people in terms of uh, environmental rights. Uh, we shed light on the environmental situation, the region, uh, their region is in. And of course, we try to educate uh, 
our colleagues uh, uh, to use um, uh, special words, special language. Uh, NGOs do not understand the businesses and businesses do not understand the NG NGOs uh, very often. So we look for such uh, quote-unquote interpreters. Um, and we've been quite successful in uh, this uh, area. And uh, the projects uh, that European Union uh, sponsors and finances, uh, well, such uh, projects are exactly about that. Thank you very much, Mikhail, as far as under. I understand uh, you are very active uh, in such areas as uh, communication. You would like everyone to communicate with everyone. You tell stories to representatives uh, from companies as well as from governmental entities. Uh, you uh, help uh, creating and building dialogue uh, between uh, corporations um, and uh, government officials. So all work with all. Uh, wonderful field. Thank you very much. Um, Ralph, um, uh, you have been working in a different context, as far as I understand, and uh, in a different organization in terms of its uh, format. Uh, what do you think? Uh, share your experience with <laughs> us, please. Uh, what is the role uh, of uh, such organizations and the uh, uh, civil society, uh, what works uh, quite well and uh, what uh, could be improved. Thank you. Well, uh, thanks for inviting me. This is uh, really a, a great conference and a very interesting experience from a German perspective. Mm -hmm. Finally, uh, the debate on climate change and uh, how to become climate neutral seems to has, uh, have arrived in Russia. That's great news. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm a kind of uh, environmental veteran. You know? I'm, I'm more or less engaged in uh, environmental movements and politics um, since the late 70s um, in, in very different roles. It started with the anti-nuclear movement uh, in Germany. Then I uh, became a city state minister in Bremen for the environment and city development. And for the last uh, 20 years, uh, I was working more on the tank side with the Heinrich Belt Foundation. This is the political foundation of the German Greens. Um, and now I'm running a new uh, think tank, uh, the, the Center for Liberal Modernity, because we feel that the battle for liberal democracy and the, the anti-liberal, the authoritarian challenge now has become um, an extremely important uh, political topic. If I'm looking back and looking forward, I would say in Germany, um, we uh, reached a new stage uh, in environmental policies and uh, specifically on, on then climate change, which is also changing the role of uh, then NGOs. After so many years, of fighting uh, for public awareness and, and pushing for uh, political action in, in, um, on, the, on the climate area. It's now, it, now, it's now not longer about if uh, we have to fight uh, than climate change and if we have to take uh, climate change seriously as a fundamental challenge uh, to the industrial societies. Now, maybe since a year or two years, I have the impression uh, we, we arrived at uh, a new stage. Now it is about how, how to do it. And of course, which speed. Yeah, but but uh, now it's much more about uh, concrete policies in uh, transforming the energy system, uh, the, the transport uh, system uh, about uh, renewing, rebuilding our our cities, and and even uh, to uh, then reconstruct uh, then heavy industries like uh, the chemical industry or the steel industry. We have reached now a very concrete stage um, in uh, then moving forward uh, to to climate uh, neutrality, and of course, of course, with the uh, decisions now. Um, um, made uh, in the, the European Union um, for much more ambitious uh, climate targets, uh, minus 55 to 60 percent uh, greenhouse gas emissions until 2030, and uh, the Green New Deal as a huge investment 
program. We all we also so it's it's now in the center uh, of politics. And uh, now uh, the NGOs, uh, the, c the civil society, of course, it's still about working as a kind of pressure group. Uh, putting pressure on on governments, on uh, young businesses, on, on young companies, but uh, we are now much more part of um, this kind of uh, young public debate uh, on which pathways, yeah, which which way towards climate uh, neutrality uh, is 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 needed, and um, as it already was mentioned, how can we bridge? Uh, than environmental uh, than goals with um, economic modernization. How can we make uh, climate neutrality also a kind of economic success story? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for such uh, a major survey. I'm so it's, it was fun to um, hear out information, uh, not only about the process, but uh, about the results. The results are very important. Uh, it is um, uh, not always possible to measure the results, uh, but it's uh, quite interesting to track the results and uh, think uh, about uh, what our uh, long-lasting work, uh, what effect it has on us. Um, and uh, uh, there are lots of pessimists uh, in many, uh, say, uh, governmental organizations, but we are optimists. Uh, well, very well. Thank you very much. So let's go back to the Russian context. I would like to give the floor to Yelena Sakirko. Yelena, please uh, tell us about Greenpeace. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm very happy that um, we are maintaining uh, such a wonderful discussion. Uh, the role of uh, the civil society, the role of uh, the non-for-profit uh, sector is vital in uh, solving climate problems, I believe. Um, this year, uh, major uh, changes uh, took place. Uh, business activity uh, declined um, because of uh, the pandemic. Uh, the demand uh, for oil uh, uh, decreased as well. And because of these trends and because of trends that we observed uh, prior to the pandemic, now we uh, see global transformation of uh, many economies, economies of uh, many countries. In uh, general, uh, we see that the uh, green uh, sector is being supported uh, all over the place. And um, uh, Russia has to take such uh, developments into account. Uh, if we don't pay special attention to such things, then uh, we, uh, uh, we um, uh, jeopardize our economic well-being. Uh, for instance, so we see that uh, European Union... Uh, keeps on uh, moving in the green course uh, that had been declared uh, prior to the pandemic. Uh, Japan, uh, uh, Korea, for instance, uh, also made promises uh, prop, uh, made promises regarding the carbon uh, neutrality and their plans um, affiliated with um, carbon-free energy by the middle of the century. Uh, many countries promote such plans, United States, uh, for instance. Uh, and uh, we see lots of initiatives in other countries. Uh, and initiatives uh, come uh, from politicians, uh, especially during uh, electoral campaigns. Uh, in our country, such initiatives uh, come uh, from uh, the uh, expert uh, community, from activists, uh, mainly, and I can tell you what we have been doing in September of 2020, together with uh, other experts, uh, we developed um, uh, a new program, a framework uh, program um, uh, on uh, building green economy in Russia. 
in the program, we take into account many proposals by green businesses and uh, non-for-profit uh, sector. In uh, May of uh, 2020, together with 15 other uh, NGOs, we put together fundamental uh, principles affiliated with uh, preserving our climate. Uh, they have uh, to do with openness and our decision-making processes. And on the basis uh, of uh, those agreements, we developed uh, the new framework uh, agreement regarding um, uh, carbon neutrality. And of course, the year is uh, 2050. And this program will help us uh, to make uh, many other very important decisions. Waste management uh, decisions, for instance, and uh, and uh, uh, forest-related decisions. Um, so we don't want to lag behind uh, other countries in terms of our economic development. We also launched an online platform where we collect uh, ideas uh, from green businesses uh, and uh, NGOs, um, as well as any activists uh, together with Climate Action Network based in um, uh, the Caucasus, Central Asia, and uh, East Europe, uh, uh, and several other organizations, uh, we do this work. Uh, you're welcome to submit your proposals. Uh, and on the basis of those proposals, by the way, uh, we came up uh, with uh, a new edition with our green uh, course that was uh, uh, presented uh, online uh, uh, the, other, the other day. Of course, we've been in touch uh, with many governmental entities as well. And importantly, representatives uh, from green businesses, um, they declare that currently um, there are ready to be used uh, solutions uh, that uh, would uh, allow them to radically change the economy. And now we need uh, uh, public uh, support. This is what Andrei Temerov uh, said, and he is one of the authors of this proposal. Uh, he uh, belongs uh, to the Green Kilowatt uh, Association. There are unique solutions uh, that uh, are in use already, and uh, they generate a wonderful economic effects. So with such solutions, uh, we can uh, find a green uh, way out. But we need the support uh, on our own. We cannot uh, move the locomotive from behind so that the locomotive moved forward. Um, well, we believe that... Um, we need uh, to uh, display uh, the infeasibility of the current economic uh, model. There are lots of, uh, there were lots of uh, incidents this year, for instance. Uh, there are many. Uh, uh, malfunctions of the environmental uh, ecological systems. Uh, there is a lack of uh, due environmental control, and there are lots uh, of um, uh, witnesses uh, to such uh, manifestations. Uh, uh, so all uh, all citizens of uh, Russia, all of us as uh, citizens of Russia, and uh, all of us uh, can uh, get involved uh, and participate in working out alternative uh, solutions. And therefore, we do need cooperation. Uh, among uh, non-for-profit organizations, government entities, uh, green organizations, and just all individuals who reside in Russia. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Yelena. Wonderful. So we uh, are moving to Baikal. Eduard, um, uh, what about you and your organization? How are you dealing with this uh, theme, environmental uh, changes? Uh, environmental changes can be seen in your Baikal region and how do you communicate this subject uh, when you work uh, with the public? Uh, what difficulties are you encountering and uh, what works so well? Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon. I'm very happy to participate in this session. Yes, indeed, uh, uh, Baikal uh, is on the news. Uh, many spears have been being broken. Uh, the level of uh, Baikal has been changing as well. And uh, 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 recently we discussed uh, what's going on around the Mongolian-based uh, uh, power plants. So there are lots of issues uh, in our region and near our region. And I would like to focus uh, on uh, the activities of our NGO. We got a grant from WWF. 
and the uh, uh, Buratskoye branch, the Buratsk based branch, uh, launched um, a special school for inspectors. Uh, and we graduated uh, approximately 30 inspectors. And we also came up with a report on potential. Uh, uh, risks, environmental risks. So we've got uh, 64 potentially hazardous uh, uh, enterprises, uh, companies, um, and our activists uh, come from particular uh, uh, seven districts uh, of uh, our region, and we have 21 districts in our region. So such people uh, uh, observe and watch, watch the situation. We've got mining companies in our region, they mine uranium, they produce uranium, they produce gold. Uh, uh, we've got the entire periodic uh, table uh, of elements uh, in our region. Uh, poachers are very active in our region. Uh, um, there's um, illegal uh, cutting of uh, forests. Uh, all over the place, uh, which is a big concern uh, to uh, many. And moreover, every year uh, we uh, face a uh, fire danger. There are lots of fires in the region. Uh, we've been trying to engage our local residents um, into our activities. Uh, for instance, um, after the report was uh, publicized, uh, we approached um, Rosprirod de Nadzor, it's uh, our uh, regulator, one of our regulators. Um, and we found out that um, nobody um, had uh, been checking the hazardous uh, companies. Um, they told us there is a moratorium uh, in terms of uh, checking those uh, companies uh, due to COVID uh, and due to lack of um, claims, uh, for instance, against uh, those uh, potentially hazardous uh, companies. Uh, I personally believe uh, that uh, we needed to raise awareness about such things uh, among our local population, because our uh, local people could um, contribute uh, to our activities. However, they do not know how to write letters or write messages. They don't know uh, what entities to contact. Um, or, for instance, um, our local regulator uh, is under a financed, uh, they're working, uh, uh, phones uh, are disconnected, and it's impossible to reach uh, those guys. Uh, moreover, uh, the regulator or the oversight uh, agencies, um, uh, well, now they're centralized. Uh, they don't provide inspectors on the spot. We don't know whom to contact and where to go in case of danger. So we need to raise awareness among the public. Um, people are not... Uh, Indifferent, and I'm talking about teachers first of all. Uh, I'm talking about uh, people who are about uh, to get uh, retired. Uh, those are students who would like to make a difference. So we hope that next year. By the way, we put together a plan regarding this. So next year, we hope uh, we are going to uh, to um, monitor. The activities of our mining companies, uh, companies that uh, generate or deal with uh, waste. Um, so these are the main areas uh, for our concentration. By the way, the Buryatia region counts not only for Baikal. We have lots of other issues as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eduard. Uh, and what about uh, climate and climate change? What about this uh, very theme? Uh, how have you been integrating it uh, into your projects? Um, if you have, of course. So, well, first of all, I'm talking about uh, our forests. If uh, we change uh, ecosystems, then, well, uh, by the way, I myself, I am a scientific fellow. I've been traveling all over the region. Uh, I remember major fires, and of course, uh, uh, the forests disappear and uh, rivers dry out. It's a sad situation. So all these things are interconnected. Thank you, Eduard, uh, for your opinion. Uh, well, uh, from Baikal, we are moving back to Berlin. 
I would like I would like to give the floor uh, to Alder Casper. Uh, you've been uh, working uh, in climate area for quite a while. Uh, I met uh, Old Doug in 2008 uh, at the Conference of Russian Environmental Organizations. Uh, the conference uh, was devoted uh, to work out to working out. Uh, um, uh, one single position uh, regarding uh, climate change. Uh, uh, Oldeg knows both the Russian context uh, and uh, the German context. Uh, my question is about the German context. Uh, what about German NGOs? Uh, how have you been working in your country and uh, what you would do differently? What else would you do? Uh, thank you very much uh, for your invitation. It's always um, a pleasant, it's always a pleasure to take part uh, in uh, Russian-German discussions, uh, which are Russian-European discussions. Um, and we have to keep such things uh, in mind. Well, let's see how our dialogue uh, keeps on uh, continuing. Uh, Ralph, uh, by the way, uh, mentioned the most important thing. Indeed, uh, in Germany, and not only in Germany, but other European countries, um, the uh, discussion course has changed. Um, now everyone is green. Almost all major businesses uh, have become green, green or would like to be green. Uh, and um, uh, you know, mostly all the political parties uh, have been developing uh, uh, their green positions and um, talking not only about the Green Party. Many parties are involved uh, and uh, we see a real uh, progress. Uh, there, there is a lot of progress on the activities of the civil society. I'm, I'm speaking for Germany in this regard. Uh, and uh, also, we can take a look at different uh, factors uh, that could play a special role in this process. There are lots of factors, uh, but the main ones are the following. And I'm going to go quickly through those uh, facts since I have only five minutes. Uh, well, I believe that the civil society in terms of uh, climate uh, and on the whole uh, in terms of uh, environmental things uh, quite fast in Germany and in many other countries um, uh, has accumulated expertise. So civil society became an uh, expert uh, community. There are lots of experts uh, there are lots of uh, professionals uh, who uh, joined uh, NGOs. Um, in uh, the early 90s, the image of uh, NGOs uh, was uh, not serious. It's not serious uh, to work uh, for an NGO. And uh, still in many European countries and uh, still in many places of Russia, um, uh, 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 people think it's not serious. Uh, however, NGOs uh, have been changing their image, uh, their overall image. Um, and uh, uh, quite a few years ago, uh, people uh, just listened uh, to us, listened to us very attentively. Um, we uh, we improved our image, and now our image uh, is quite serious. So which... Uh, uh, encourages uh, other serious, quote-unquote, people to work uh, for NGOs and with NGOs. Um, another thing is uh, coordination among NGOs. Uh, it's a very important factor, and uh, Germans were not the first ones. Uh, I remember when uh, uh, I... Uh, in 2007, in 2008, uh, the... The uh, Climate Alliance was established. Uh, uh, it was a network uh, organization that uh, absorbed not only environmental NGOs, but uh, many, many stakeholders, including uh, trade unions, religious organizations, uh, social organizations, um, which uh, say uh, uh, protected um, apartment uh, rentees uh, in uh, uh, the cities. In any case, so uh, this movement uh, 
has been developing during the last uh, several years. Again, we're not talking only about environmentalists and activists. So we're talking about all representatives of the civil society. And uh, other members of uh, the European Union launched this uh, process uh, uh, earlier than Germany, the Dutch, uh, for instance. However, uh, do uh, pay attention to such things. Uh, uh, the resources base uh, is another factor. They say Germans are rich. Uh, well, uh, I apologize. Uh, my organs are, are writing that uh, please uh, use the Russian, uh, Russian channel. I apologize. Uh, let me switch to the Russian channel. And uh, your, your Russian is perfect. Uh, therefore, please uh, use the Russian channel. Uh, sorry for that. And now I am in the Russian channel. If uh, you experience any problems, please uh, do let me know somehow or interrupt me. Uh, so the third uh, factor comes for the uh, uh, resource uh, base. Uh, there are major NGOs uh, with uh, half a million members, uh, um, friends of uh, uh, Earth, uh, for instance, in Germany. Um, of course, the, they were established after um, World War II and gradually and steadily they accumulated uh, a lot uh, of uh, members. Um, uh, they have lots of uh, resources. Uh, quite often, um, uh, people who donate their money are not uh, members of the organization and they are very convincing at the level of the uh, government, uh, for instance, or businesses. Uh, and also, I should mention project money. And for Russia, it's a major theme. There are governmental resources. Uh, there are resources from different ministries. Uh, the European Commission provides uh, money. There are foundations. Uh, uh, there are um, uh, finances. Uh, uh, so uh, there is a well-developed um, chain uh, of uh, donorship, not uh, in all European uh, uh, countries. And the German situation is worse than that in Germany, United States, but still. And in uh, Russia, this um, story is only developing and it will keep uh, developing. Now we are saying how fast uh, this network is going to develop and who is going to help this network and how the money is going to be uh, uh, spent. Uh, lots of things uh, could be done even in Germany. And also, last but not least, um, uh, people don't know about it uh, very well, but it's a very important thing. Uh, pressure groups, uh, NGOs uh, are pressure groups. Uh, everyone knows about it. Uh, people know that NGOs uh, put a lot of pressure onto the government uh, or businesses. Uh, this one of uh, major NGOs' uh, roles, and uh, we need uh, this role. Currently, German-based uh, NGOs support uh, youth uh, movements, um, for instance. NGO watch, watchers um, are being very active uh, currently. So NGOs, um, they, uh, they siege, uh, they siege uh, politicians. Uh, uh, politicians um, are defending themselves and the NGOs are sieging uh, politicians. Uh, there's such a term now. Uh, and... Uh, Uh, still, we see uh, some sort of conflict. Uh, uh, there's a gap between politicians and the NGOs, and the second role is quite important. Uh, NGOs uh, are bridge builders, uh, or they uh, oil the mechanism in order for the process to uh, function uh, smoothly. WWF uh, in, uh, in Germany and in Russia has got uh, such a role. And uh, uh, the first role is more typical of uh, Greenpeace. Um, and uh, many NGO representatives uh, do not understand what the difference is, but uh, it is a very important uh, difference. Um, the, uh, uh, we need to know such things in order uh, uh, 
uh, for us to make the very first uh, steps, at least uh, first uh, steps. Uh, uh, we are talking about brand new initiatives. Uh, uh, what uh, uh, talks should be conducted at the level of uh, Bundestag? Uh, 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 so we siege and we offer tools. Uh, we participate uh, in many debates um, and uh, we even uh, provide an opportunity for politicians uh, to win in the situation. Um, I would like to give the floor to another uh, speaker. There are lots of examples of uh, how we deal with uh, different businesses and uh, how we have been changing German politics. Maybe later I could tell you about it. Angelina, if uh, you wish, I could uh, tell you about the challenges. Yes, please go ahead, if uh, you have time for me. Yes, you have a minute. Uh, well, the fact is that um, we have to strengthen um, uh, our activities in our second uh, role um, um, we do put uh, pressure and the uh, European electorate uh, wants uh, changes uh, from the politicians. Uh, remember the last elections uh, to the European uh, Parliament, uh, they were called uh, uh, climate elections of uh, 2019. Uh, in all uh, countries of the European uh, Union, uh, people demanded uh, uh, of their politicians to do much more in relation uh, to climate issues. Uh, and NGOs, um, work on uh, local transformations and local uh, areas uh, where our society functions. Uh, and the main challenge uh, is this uh, very thing. So we have to make a transition. I can talk a lot about uh, challenges and about the potential, but uh, I would like to give the floor to other speakers. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, old Doug, uh, for your wonderful uh, survey here. Because uh, imagine you are working in uh, Germany, we are working uh, in other countries, and it's difficult for us to understand how NGOs uh, work uh, there, what uh, strategies uh, do they adopt. Uh, and uh, thanks to you, we found out uh, there's a major diversity of organizations. Uh, there are bridge uh, uh, makers, uh, there are mechanism oilers, uh, so to say here. Um, we try to build communication and there are lots of challenges that you are facing and there are uh, the ones who siege uh, castles uh, of politicians uh, and uh, corporate uh, bosses. Uh, after uh, your uh, presentation, I uh, see a map of NGOs in front of my eyes. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your uh, wonderful analytics. Um, my next uh, question will be addressed to our Russian participant. Um, Arshak Makichan. Arshak, uh, uh, you represent a new youth uh, environmental uh, movement. Um, uh, how, uh, how is it for you to work in uh, Russia? You are not an NGO, you are a uh, public movement, so to say. What are you doing in this area? and uh, what uh, could be done in a different way. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Arshak Makichan. I am a climate activist, uh, one of coordinators uh, for the Fridays for Future in Russia movement. Um, uh, some uh, people here believe uh, that uh, we deliberately uh, um, asked uh, to become members of this conference. Why? Because activists uh, ask uh, many uneasy uh, questions. Uh, I actually once uh, asked at the climate conference why uh, uh, the chair people don't want to give the floor to climate activists. Um, it is uh, surprising to me that we are being invited um, over to conferences in other countries, but we are being ignored in uh, Russia, although our future is being discussed uh, in our uh, country, right? It's great uh, that you give the floor to uh, climate activists. Uh, climate activism does uh, work. I'm not going to talk about uh, arrests, uh, for instance. Uh, such are our realities in Russia. We keep uh, on being involved in activism uh, because... Um, not everyone understands uh, what can be more frightening that, 
than climate uh, crisis. Uh, well, some people believe uh, that uh, they can um, uh, find uh, some um, legislation uh, affiliated uh, solutions, uh, but again, uh, 100 persons, even if they are high-ranking government officials, uh, cannot uh, uh, change the climate in our country. Mm. Well, in Europe, uh, those were climate activists uh, who changed uh, the uh, climate uh, agenda, and people have the right to know the truth. Uh, maybe be, uh, you don't like me or you don't like uh, Greta. However, uh, if we didn't have a climate activist, this conference uh, would have been conducted uh, and, uh, hosted only in 10 years uh, when it would be too late. I'm not trying to frighten a new one. Such conferences are being held all over the world uh, for decades and leaders uh, of many countries uh, keep on playing uh, their geopolitical uh, games instead of uh, putting their efforts uh, together. And uh, we've been paying high price for that. Uh, in Russia, there are more and more climate uh, disasters every year and many people do not understand why. Uh, instead of talking about such things at the level of uh, federal TV channels, uh, government officials uh, um, uh, say that uh, there's no connection uh, between such uh, things. Uh, there's no environmental education so to say our government uh, um, has plans uh, to deepen the production of uh, 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 hydrocarbons. Um, and uh, new alternative uh, technologies are competitive in uh, different uh, regions. Uh, coal is being burnt in many uh, regions of our country. Uh, and uh, 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 this is a very strange uh, climate policy at the level of the government. And of course, uh, businesses um, uh, chase uh, profits and they kill uh, our future campaigns are being launched uh, where science uh, is uh, denounced, uh, where they say that uh, we are being supported by uh, masons, uh, for instance, uh, or reptiloids. But we tell the truth and we jeopardize our freedom and our climate activism in uh, Russia is an uneasy choice, but we will keep on doing what we've been doing. Our future depends on our work. Businesses already understand uh, that that the current uh, business uh, model are not feasible uh, for Russia. We need the changes and we need millions of uh, activists and Greta Thunberg uh, proved that uh, anyone can impact the situation. Uh, climate um, uh, changes uh, impact uh, all spheres of our lives. And uh, it is very important for us uh, to put our efforts together and do things uh, together. I myself um, um, I came to the conference in order to tell the uneasy truth. Uh, no matter how much you do, I'm not talking specifically, I'm addressing a wider audience. Uh, nevertheless, uh, we are going to demand more and more. The um, uneasy truth is that in any case, we are going to come out into the streets in Russia and in other countries of the world. The crisis should be recognized. We should behave as adults. And if politicians are listening to us right now, then I should tell them that it's very important for them to listen to people. We are ready for the dialogue on an equitable basis. And at the end of my presentation, I would like to say a couple of um words about um, uh, another activist, and this is what uh, she wanted to pass on to, to you activists, are not the evil people. Uh, we organize um, different activities. Um, uh, we launch uh, festivals. Uh, um, we do tutorials, uh, and uh, we do many other things. Uh, you don't understand how cool we are, dear government officials. Uh, and we don't uh, like that um, we can make a difference. Thank you very much uh, for inviting us. Uh, Arshak, uh, thank you very much uh, for your speech. It's very important to hear out uh, the voice of uh, young climate uh, activists uh, who become uh, a great uh, force, a great uh, movement in the Russian context as well as uh, in the European context. I'm very happy that you are with us and I'm happy that uh, you've been in touch with uh, other members of your movement. So thank you very much, Arshak. Um, uh, Lubov, I would like to give the floor to you right now. Uh, quite often uh, we um, hear uh, how uh, 
uh, indigenous uh, people uh, feel uh, the impact of climate changes uh, on, on their lives. Um, what about your organization? How do you participate in the environmental agenda? How important this agenda uh, is for you? And uh, what uh, uh, could you do differently? Um, good afternoon, dear colleagues. I would like to thank the organizers of this conference and uh, of this session for giving me such an opportunity. Um, uh, the climate change issue is very relevant uh, for indigenous uh, people because we're talking about uh, how um, vegetation and um, uh, uh, how flora and fauna have been changing. Uh, during the most recent uh, years, uh, we've been uh, facing the um, the issue of uh, uh, Pacific uh, salmon uh, population reduction. Uh, the uh, trends are the same all over the place. Uh, we see uh, we, we hear messages about uh, major catches, uh, for instance, um, in different seas. Uh, and then we hear messages about uh, constraints uh, for the indigenous uh, people. Um, the fish population, uh, uh, thanks to those uh, restrictions and the limitation, is not going to um, uh, rehabilitate and uh, restore. Um, uh, I can mention uh, the Amur uh, River, huge uh, river, 20, um, uh, 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 thousands and thousands uh, of indigenous people uh, live there, um, and uh, local uh, 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 fishing companies um, are taking everything, just everything. A similar situation um, uh, took a place um, um, in the fall and uh, in the summer. The business uh, people would like to take it all and they're thinking only about uh, their profits. And uh, currently in our country, the fishing industry is uh, structured in such a way that uh, only interests uh, of businesses are being satisfied uh, and um, indigenous uh, people are being oppressed. Uh, imagine uh, we've been uh, uh, we've been uh, living by means of that fish uh, for thousands and thousands of uh, years. Of the administration of the Habarovsk uh, uh, branch. Uh, uh, the Khabarovsk branch of uh, WWF uh, and the Khabarovsk uh, regional administration have been looking for new ways. Um, and imagine what do I do? Instead of uh, helping my kids uh, to do their lessons, uh, I travel uh, to different locations along the river. We have to uh, watch and monitor uh, who is uh, trying to catch what type of fish uh, along the river. Every year, we reveal uh, new cases. Uh, the poachers uh, become uh, more and more sophisticated. And by the way, there are connections uh, between industrial companies, poachers, uh, and um, the law enforcement agencies. Uh, imagine the system uh, punishes uh, uh, my indigenous uh, colleagues uh, uh, for the attempt uh, to get uh, food for themselves in traditional ways. Um, and um, I uh, remember what uh, was uh, going on in 2017. Uh, the river was uh, physically blocked, uh, I remember. Well, I cannot uh, say that uh, all uh, our uh, inspectors are that bad. Uh, we need rotation. Rotation is a good uh, mechanism uh, in terms of... Uh, uh, fighting the corruption. Uh, but again, uh, such uh, site visits are dangerous uh, among uh, many other problems. Uh, and uh, we have no other choice. Uh, what are the alternatives? Uh, should we produce uh, fish together with industrialists and the poachers? Um, well, also, uh, we have uh, to, um, thanks to WWF, uh, we uh, track uh, the movements uh, of uh, 
fish. So we can track uh, whether we have fish at the river, uh, in what the quantity is, etc. And uh, the more uh, fish uh, is being caught, uh, the more uh, quantities we can forecast uh, for the future. And uh, for the last uh, three days, uh, uh, our special task force uh, has been uh, active. Uh, we just physically count uh, different types of uh, uh, fishes in the uh, river. And all um, Amur region uh, has been inspected uh, by us during the several last uh, years. The situation uh, is quite uh, pathetic. Uh, there are quote-unquote empty years ahead of us. Uh, 2017 was the worst uh, uh, year, and imagine uh, uh, there are people uh, uh, hungry for cave, for caviar. We don't have a good system that uh, would allow us to control such illegal activities. Um, Will uh, our uh, team members uh, reach uh, such uh, problematic uh, spots? Uh, but uh, representatives of the government, uh, they do not uh, reach uh, those uh, uh, spots. So uh, the local businesses not uh, think uh, about what we are going to leave uh, as uh, heritage to our kids. Um, of course, uh, all official forecasts. Um, um, uh, doctored uh, the all the values in the forecasts are much uh, higher than they are in uh, real life, um, and uh, also uh, the fish um, has been uh, decreasing in its quantities uh, due to different processes taking place in the Pacific Ocean. In Japan, they have uh, less uh, fish, so to say. I know that uh, they have um, uh, fish nurseries apparently, so they uh, produce artificial uh, fish. Uh, but natural fish uh, has been declining in terms of its uh, quantities in the open ocean. Also, major rivers um, have been uh, drying out uh, or have been, have been becoming narrower due to deforestation. Um, so imagine uh, the level of uh, water goes up uh, very quickly or goes down uh, very uh, uh, quickly, uh, there's uh, deforestation in different areas of the region, um, listing different uh, districts uh, where deforestation takes uh, place. Um, and uh, by the way, we have uh, one uh, area uh, where uh, inhabited uh, by uh, tigers. Uh, uh, so problems I'm talking about uh, pose problems uh, for the tigers. Uh, because of deforestation, we have bad uh, roads, uh, no forest, uh, no wild animals. And uh, in the Nanai district, uh, uh, they just uh, burnt uh, uh, timber. Uh, there's no forest there whatsoever. So our, our economy is quite weak. Lubov, I apologize. Um, uh, I would like to limit you in terms of time. Uh, so I believe uh, uh, that uh, deforestation along the rivers uh, should be prohibited. It's a crime against ourselves and uh, nature will take uh, revenge. Um, I'm sure only indigenous people know how to live in a sustainable way. Um, uh, in 2020, all of us uh, felt that uh, there was no fish uh, in the Far East uh, or in Kamchatka or in Alaska, by the way. Uh, so we should uh, ease uh, pressure onto the fish population. I'm sure that uh, we'll see such miracles as uh, fish only in museums. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to talk about such, such things. Thank you for your attention. Lubov, uh, thank you very much uh, for listing specific uh, issues and uh, challenges um, that uh, you are facing now. And of course, some of those challenges are related with the climate changes. And of course, um, 
um, uh, 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 poor management, uh, uh, not very sustainable development uh, take place uh, in your region, uh, and it's a long chain of issues and uh, problems. Uh, which pose uh, challenges, of course, major challenges to the indigenous uh, people. Thank you very much. Um, uh, quite often when we talk uh, on the uh, climate topic, we believe that it is something abstract. Uh, we say that temperature is going to rise or CO2 uh, content is going to rise. We talk about some global things and uh, your story is about very specific things. Uh, the impact of uh, climate change uh, on to what's happening in your region. You mentioned many negative uh, trends. It was a very sad story. Thank you very much for sharing your story. Dear friends, we are moving uh, on. Um, out of Habarovsk, uh, we are moving to Krasnoyarsk, which is not uh, that uh, far away. Anastasia, you uh, like the urban uh, theme, and the urban theme uh, for climate activists is especially important. Uh, there are also movements, uh, there are also initiatives uh, of uh, all uh, sorts. Uh, so we watch uh, this very trend, and at the same time, we see that uh, cities uh, play uh, more uh, important role uh, in the um, uh, climate uh, agenda, global agenda. Um, uh, cities um, emit uh, greenhouse gases um, big time. At the same time, uh, cities uh, suffer from climate changes the most. Um, uh, talk about talk with us about your work. How do you promote the climate agenda and uh, how this agenda is important for your target audience? What would you like to do? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, let me make a short uh, disclaimer before I make my presentation. I apologize. Well, I sincerely believe uh, that uh, we have to deal with uh, climate uh, uh, changes. And I will be talking about adaptation among some other things as well. I come from Krasnoyarsk and uh, many people in my city and many people in Siberia believe that uh, global warming and climate uh, change uh, is the restoration of the universal global uh, fairness in Siberia, our weather will be similar to what's going on in Monte Carlo. Our uh, Siberian uh, winter is going to be milder and uh, will enjoy the new climate. Um, many people voice this very position. Unfortunately, not everything is that perfect uh, and uh, the change uh, negatively impacts uh, Siberia. It is uh, permafrost thaw in particular, which results in disaster aftermath quite often, as well as a degradation of um, local vegetation um, and uh, climate uh, changes may negatively impact uh, urban life. And uh, in our case, uh, we already feel the uh, heat waves uh, for several days in a row, for instance, uh, temperatures um, are extremely high, up to 40 degrees centigrade um, for several days. Uh, imagine that, uh, or rain showers, um, flash, flash floods. Uh, so we do experience such things a lot in our city now. It's not only a threat uh, to our property, it's a threat uh, to our lives, uh, and therefore, we have been talking about our adaptation to climate changes at uh, our urban level. And we believe uh, that uh, all the uh, talks about uh, engineering solutions uh, are a joke, to put it uh, mildly. It's uh, hard to imagine some sort of uh, dome that's going to uh, cover the city, or it's hard to imagine pumps that are going to pump uh, out uh, additional uh, of water. This is science fiction. Uh, the most important thing is the um, uh, green uh, infrastructure 
environmentally friendly infrastructure. It is the only way for the city to protect uh, its uh, residents. Uh, on one front, uh, people are fighting against uh, climate changes, and on the other uh, front, uh, will we need uh, this infrastructure? This is what we are doing, have been doing, and it's uh, hard to talk about vegetation in the city in the context of climate changes, uh, because, like I said, it uh, for many people, climate changes uh, do not look like a threat. People do not perceive climate changes as a threat uh, in um, uh, our city, but we promote this very context. And vegetation in our city is um, perceived um, as an obstacle, um, as a threat. Uh, a tree branches fall down, cars uh, may suffer damage, and instead of this uh, tree, there may be a parking lot. We don't need this tree. Let's uh, cut it, etc. So it's a widely spread opinion. Or in the best uh, scenario, now we are going to build uh, parks. Uh, we are going to pave uh, a big uh, chunk of uh, land and uh, uh, to beautify the area, we're going to plant several trees. Uh, however, this approach um, got uh, obsolete um, half a century ago, this attitude uh, to vegetation. We believe that uh, we need um, vegetation infrastructure in our city. What can we do as an NGO? We don't have our own territory in our city. We cannot uh, plant uh, trees or we cannot uh, protect uh, uh, trees. Uh, we do not control anything and uh, we're not part of legislation efforts. Uh, we're not city planners, uh, but as NGO, we cannot uh, see what's going on indifferently. Therefore, we try to act uh, and uh, we um, uh, are engaged uh, in um, our legislation efforts. Uh, we come up with proposals uh, aimed uh, at uh, improving uh, the vegetation situation. And we also conduct uh, public control. Public control is uh, not uh, as powerful as governmental control, but uh, nevertheless, uh, uh, we do try to uh, identify violations and pass our information on to um, uh, decision makers, uh, prosecutor's office, for instance, and of course we raise awareness uh, among many other things. We don't publish any magazines, but we are very active uh, in social networks. Uh, and also we are involved in accounting. Uh, it's uh, hard to manage what you do not uh, count uh, uh, for uh, so we created a special uh, system. It's a computer program, uh, and we um, count all the city, all the trees in the city. We do mapping, uh, so we look uh, for territories uh, where we can go ahead and beautify the area. Uh, also, um, another subject of ours is uh, city transportation, public transportation. We are for environmentally friendly transport. Uh, now we're working on the development of um, infrastructure for bicycles. Imagine people use cars in order to travel for only one kilometer. And if we do the calculations, uh, then we're going to see that uh, the amount of greenhouse gases emitted uh, to the atmosphere is uh, immense. And uh, if all these people are going to take a walk uh, or if uh, they use uh, bicycles, um, it's going to be a different picture. And we're going to contribute as well. This is what I wanted to tell you. I will be happy to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, Anastasia. And uh, thank you for mentioning the urban uh, theme uh, during our discussion. You are talking about very specific uh, actions, by the way, which is very nice. And uh, for many... Uh, uh, many uh, our guests are from Europe, uh, uh, it is a major surprise, uh, this information about heat waves uh, in your city. You talked about vegetation, uh, green infrastructure, and your adaptation to the environmental and climate uh, changes. Um, this work... Um, this is what we do at different levels, at the city level, at the regional level, at the national level and international level. I'm happy to hear that uh, you are such wonderful experts and uh, influencers. Uh, Ksenia Vakhrusheva is our next uh, speaker. Uh, we've been uh, talking about environmental awareness and uh, education. 
and uh, the Bologna Center where Xenia is uh, from uh, deals with uh, such things. Uh, uh, so Xenia, I would like to give the floor. What have you been doing and how do you see the role of uh, environmental uh, NGOs um, in our Russian context? Thank you, Angelina. Uh, my name is uh, Ksenia Vakrosheva. I am a coordinator of different activities at the Bologna Center. We are based in St. Petersburg. We have an office in Murmansk, but uh, we uh, work uh, throughout uh, Russia in different areas. And first of all, I would like uh, to support Mikhail Babenko in his idea that uh, um, uh, it is not only climate agenda that is important for NGOs in our country, it is uh, also... It is uh, also uh, uh, the environmental uh, heritage, uh, so to say, uh, our environmental legislation uh, uh, um, is being violated on many fronts and we have to deal with such things uh, and all these areas are um, interconnected. Uh, it's hard to separate uh, them and we deal with uh, different issues. Um, And I can mention the three major blocks of our activities. Uh, it's legal support. Uh, for instance, uh, we have uh, uh, lawyers, and uh, you're welcome to contact our lawyers. Um, uh, if you need uh, a consultancy, for instance, uh, if you would like uh, your interests uh, to be protected in courts, uh, um, we don't have a climate cases. Um, as our um, climate NGOs uh, uh, have in uh, Germany or Holland, uh, for instance. But nevertheless, uh, cases that we are involved in, uh, uh, do uh, contribute uh, to the development of the climate agenda. Uh, there is a Molenski Park in St. Petersburg. Uh, our lawyer was very active uh, there, and uh, uh, they talked about uh, cutting trees uh, uh, in a major territory there. So that was our contribution uh, to the protection uh, of um, city vegetation in a particular district. It was a very specific uh, case. Uh, thank goodness uh, uh, it was a successful uh, case uh, for us. Uh, they're not going to build uh, the new uh, sports venue. They have lots of sports uh, venues uh, there. Um, uh, waste uh, management plant, uh, Moscow region, the city of Voskresensk. Um, there were lots of protests um, uh, around this uh, project. Uh, there's litigation. And uh, there in Voskresensk, um, many requirements were put forward. Uh, the uh, a uh, client, uh, so to say, didn't uh, meet the governmental uh, requirements and uh, the construction process uh, was uh, suspended. Um, uh, well, the aftermath uh, from the project uh, can be very negative. Um, and uh, uh, if the plant uh, starts uh, functioning, then uh, it's a worsening of the situation around the climate. Uh, so we are being very active in that uh, 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 in that location. Uh, so this is one block of our activities, the legal uh, uh, block. Uh, we provide the legal support uh, and uh, we've been in touch uh, with uh, uh, law school students. Uh, we, our goal is uh, to um, uh, is to engage them uh, in such activities uh, as well. Our second uh, block of activities, uh, this is what Angelina already mentioned, uh, that is uh, raising awareness. Um, we have um, a program aimed at uh, school students. Uh, we uh, tell them about uh, the climate in general and the impact of people on the climate. And we talk about environmental problems. Um, I can mention our what we call information block. Uh, we cooperate with different uh, journalists uh, who write articles uh, on uh, the environmental uh, subject. And uh, you can read uh, their publications. Uh, 
there's a specific site to where you can find their publications. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, Ecologia e Pravo is uh, one of such uh, publications. Uh, uh, there you can find very profound uh, analysis, by the way. And um, of course, we have to raise awareness uh, uh, among business entities. Uh, and among uh, representatives uh, of uh, governmental entities. In this uh, area, we promote uh, uh, electric uh, cars and alternative uh, sources. And uh, who knows, maybe uh, Chubais uh, the other day mentioned the association that uh, uh, we uh, cooperate with. Uh, so in any case, uh, uh, we are thinking about what is especially important for Russian businesses. Um, and uh, we know that uh, uh, Russian authorities uh, uh, always uh, like to hear out uh, Russian experts and international experts uh, when they talk about the environment and climate issues. And uh, NGOs uh, uh, can uh, be that uh, very uh, expert, uh, expert pool uh, uh, that uh, uh, the government will consult with. Uh, we have uh, good connections. Uh, we know the experts. Uh, we know uh, where to find uh, great uh, experts um, in our field. Uh, we uh, know many representatives of uh, science uh, and uh, environmental agencies of other countries as well. And this is what uh, our authorities and our businesses are lacking. And the third block of our activities uh, accounts uh, for expertise and the public control uh, over the accumulated uh, damages. First of all, I'm talking about radioactive waste and uh, hazardous waste. Thank you, Xenia, very much uh, for introducing what you do. And thank you for telling us uh, uh, what um, is uh, of special relevance uh, to our citizens um, who approach you in your office. Uh, the um, uh, vegetation, waste management, uh, uh, such uh, topics uh, are especially relevant for many of us uh, these days. Uh, and I can mention also climate agenda at the local level. It's great uh, that uh, you are helping other people, other activists, uh, even uh, people from other regions. And uh, from Russia, we are now moving to the European Union, and I would like to give uh, the floor to Darius. Uh, Darius um, represents the round table um, on the issues of uh, climate uh, regulations. Um, So, Darius, your organization uh, conducted uh, uh, consultations between Russia and European Union uh, regarding uh, uh, cross-border climate uh, regulation. Tell us about your work, please. Uh, you are an expert uh, center. What do you do in this area and what works out well? Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you, Angelina. Yes, to complete the picture, indeed, we are a think tank, Brussels-based think tank, and we focus on climate change, uh, both in the EU and global aspects. So we look into the EU legislation and we look into the, for example, the climate convention, the UNFCCC process. Um, so when last year there was there was European elections and the new commission was formed, Ms. van der Leyen becoming the president, she announced the European Green Deal, first of all. And for us, it was natural to address these issues uh, with all the components of the European Green Deal. So as previous speakers mentioned, it goes very deep into the sectoral measures, not only the, the long-term target and the 2030 target. Uh, beginning of this year, we already had the first meeting in January um, where we could invite all the uh, decision makers, the, the institutions, so the, the European Commission, for example, different DGs, as we call them, directorates, uh, then business stakeholders and civil society organizations. So maybe what was mentioned before, we are pretty privileged because we have access to this castle. Where, where the decision makers, they sit and, and we can invite them uh, to the discussion and they come to, to meetings like ours today or in person when, when it was still possible. 
uh, then the commission gives the action, the the, the option for uh, for the stakeholders to comment on the legislative uh, um, agenda. And when there is an idea like the uh, like the sectoral measures, for example, uh, we will have the ETS reform, but also the the border carbon adjustment, as you mentioned. So the the adjustment to the uh, to the to the mechanism of of CO two imports. There is public consultations, and normally there is a very early stage, which we call the inception impact assessment. So the commission asks how it should be organized to provide the uh, the consultations, and then uh, everybody can give feedback. Fortunately, this is transparent, so it go goes to the to the commission's website, and you can see also what the other stakeholders were providing. They can they can say, send their answers. Uh, in the case of the of the border carbon adjustment, the CBAM, we were uh, uh, we were uh, we we undertook the making the summary of this of this uh, submission. So we were not only the participant, but in our research capacity, we could also um, look to the answers of the others and summarize them. So then we could confront the commission with the with the summary they they making and see if the if the process is uh, is, is coherent and we all agree that. Plus our our uh, other colleagues, the stakeholders, as we call them, the the key players, they could come and and actually comment during the meeting. Uh, at the second stage, we also did the uh, participated the public consultations, and we added our uh, we call it a rationale. So the the situation was that the commission put only the survey, the questionnaire on the website, where you could uh, tick the options A, B, C, D, and add maybe a short comment. When we thought that we will add additional comment on the questionnaire and give the chance also to uh, um, to check how the others feel about the direction the process is going to. Uh, by the way, I understand there is a parallel session going on on the CBAM. So so I'm describing only the process. Uh, Particularly in this topic, uh, now in January, we're planning the global town hall. So we're inviting the players, I think it was mentioned, the uh, Japan or Korea, those who also participate in, the, uh, in, in their efforts on climate, uh, climate action. Uh, we invited these this players also to the discussion on the EU legislation itself. So uh, this year we went to the number of... Uh, uh, we call them town halls. So this is a virtual meeting between the EU stakeholders, very, very similar to the formula we have today. There was somebody speaking from the EU and then the respondent from the other country. We had US as well, India, South Africa, and we had Russian Federation. That's true. On September 8th, I, 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 I remember we had a bilateral meeting open to the, to the audience. Uh, with uh, co-hosted by us, the ERCST, the Roundtable in Brussels, and the EPEM, so the the Institute for National Monopolies in in Moscow, and that was that was very interesting for everybody because we uh, we could take the message from the from the country, then see how the overall reaction is to from the um, from the from the trade partners as we call them. Um, and bring it back to the EU. So also the I understand co-hosts of today's conference, the, the European External Action Service. This is an outreach activity which we're doing, but it's in, independent. So this is next to the official process. We're not replacing the official process. We're just doing this because we feel the capacity of engaging more stakeholders and then uh, also doing it at earlier stage. So we can do it before the, the process is very formalized. Uh, and uh, going back for a second to the European Green Deal, I think we're hosting also uh, now at the beginning of the next year kind of an annual conference. So, so we uh, we had five or six meetings where we could discuss on the state of the Green Deal. You also have different, slightly different plan before the pandemic and uh, pandemic and now. So throughout the the ongoing months, we could see how it changes and also comment on the on the process how the Commission that the leader is is providing us a, a direction. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much uh, for introducing uh, uh, your work. At this point, I would like to uh, give uh, the floor to Ralph uh, one more time uh, because uh, he would like to make a comment uh, regarding how NGOs uh, work uh, in the climate change uh, area. Yes, uh, Ralph would like to add something. Please, Ralph, go ahead. 
Thanks a lot, Angelina. Um, listening to all these impressive voices and this rich menu of, of activities, I would like to add a brief remark on the relationship between government and NGOs uh, before the backdrop of um, my experience both in, in Germany and working with a lot of Russian uh, friends and uh, NGOs. Governments clearly have to play a key role in the transition towards, cli to, uh, towards uh, climate neutrality. But this transition will not happen as a top-down project only. The European experience underlines the crucial role of science, of entrepreneurship, of the media, and of civil society in a very broad sense. If I would try to summarize the, the reports we, we heard over the last hour, civil society is absolutely crucial as a change agent in different dimensions. First, as a pressure group for, for more ambitious policies and targets. Governments will not move towards more ambitious climate policies without continuous pressure from civil society. Second, NGOs are working as kind of education agencies promoting environmental awareness of the broader public. Third, NGOs have an important role as watchdogs towards governments and companies monitoring their performance and demanding real action instead of green window dressing. And last but not least, NGOs can and should work on green transition scenarios for certain sectors of our economies. For example, our center is currently working on a roadmap towards sustainable aviation. This is the expert part of uh, NGO activities uh, Kaspar Oldag and others were, were talking about. And finally, the impact of NGOs is very much depending from the political environment they are working in. If civil society actors should play their full role as agents of change, you need an open space for debate, for critique and public protest. And you need a political system which is responsive to social movements and public protests instead of silencing critical voices and controlling the public space. Governments should understand civil society as an independent sphere, of course working within a legal framework, but not controlled by state authorities. Thanks for giving me the opportunity for these remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ralph, uh, for your addition, and thank you for your wonderful uh, uh, survey um, uh, uh, of uh, what uh, types of work exist out there for NGOs and what types of work become more relevant uh, for NGOs. Uh, now we have a question from the audience. It is the following question. In Russia, the climate change agenda, is it, uh, does it have uh, more more and larger priority than assistance uh, to the poor uh, or fight against uh, labor discrimination? How can we attract uh, uh, financiers, uh, for instance, uh, and sponsors? Um, there will be lots of other questions as well. Uh, yes, uh, please go ahead, Elena. Thank you, Angelina. Thank you very much, dear speakers, for your wonderful presentations, and thank you for this question. The fact is that climate uh, uh, changes, uh, now called climate crisis, uh, the changes are taking place uh, at such pace and speed uh, that uh, this pace and speed uh, are those uh, of a real crisis. Uh, and, uh, of course, our medical, uh, our health uh, uh, care system uh, is far from being perfect. Uh, say, uh, uh, fires were mentioned uh, uh, in a particular region. Uh, people uh, suffer. People suffer because of fires and because of the droughts. Uh, uh, what about uh, our healthcare system? It's so uh, lagging behind, and we lack information. Uh, so, uh, such things are going to. Uh, 
um, uh, reveal themselves in the larger and larger quantities. There were lots of social uh, problems. Uh, I liked what uh, Lubov uh, mentioned. Uh, she talked about very specific down-to-earth uh, things. In addition, we experience environmental uh, problems. Uh, and um, let us not uh, forget about uh, oil, uh, gas mining, and coal mining uh, uh, regions. Uh, for many decades, uh, people there have been dealing with... Uh, very uh, poor uh, water sources and it's uh, hard for indigenous people to maintain uh, their traditional lives uh, and uh, if uh, coal is uh, produced in your region then uh, your health is far from being perfect for sure so um, i believe that uh, we should be talking about climate uh, 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 climate disaster now, not uh, just climate uh, change, uh, changes. We should be um, uh, promoting the climate agenda. We should raise the awareness among the population. And the role of uh, NGOs uh, is uh, to tell such stories and create uh, platforms uh, for conversations and uh, engagement uh, and, of course, provide uh, some uh, uh, means as legal means. Uh, thank you. Olga apparently had uh, another comment. Uh, uh, old Doug. Uh, yes, I would like uh, to mention the issue of um, mecenates, uh, so to say, the sponsors. Uh, well, there are lots of rich people out there uh, who are waking up uh, in terms of uh, climate issues, and they feel uh, that uh, they are more guilty than uh, poorer people uh, in this uh, area. And uh, here in Germany, I can feel that, uh, there in Russia, I can feel that uh, there's a new interest uh, to this uh, brand new uh, major theme. Although rich people don't know what they do, whom do they support? They don't know. Uh, they're afraid that uh, some uh, entities may just grab their money and uh, do nothing. It's true about Russia, it's true about Germany, and uh, therefore we need to meet, uh, we need to make friends. Uh, it uh, sounds uh, like it's simple to do, but uh, we have to do it. Um, uh, between NGOs and um, rich people, there's a big gap. Uh, sometimes they live in different worlds. Um, Oh, we can attend uh, their uh, conference in Russia. There is a forum for donors. Uh, it's a great uh, civil organization that uh, brings those uh, people together as well as uh, uh, those uh, organizations. Uh, uh, so now they're thinking maybe we should... Uh, uh, should support uh, climate-related uh, 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 projects. And I believe that we should engage uh, this communication process. Uh, the same I can say about uh, Germany, not only Russia. Uh, so uh, we're sitting around, uh, I'm talking about NGOs. Uh, all of us have been engaged in uh, climate issues. Uh, uh, corporations, political parties, uh, and uh, uh, what about us, uh, NGOs? There are not uh, many of us. Even in Germany, there are not too many NGOs. Uh, therefore, uh, we also need uh, brand new approaches uh, in order to attract uh, new participants and uh, partners. Uh, let's engage uh, with our partners in uh, Russia. Let's uh, discuss things uh, together with them. I guess it's going to be a very fruitful soil for cooperation. So how do we try uh, uh, new uh, participants, richer uh, people who never invested any money in uh, such fronts. Um, yes, I also wanted to mention uh, the following. Quite often we compare economy, uh, social issues, and the environment. Uh, there's such a term as sustainable development uh, that uh, presumes that all these uh, three factors are supposed to be three sides of uh, one triangle. Uh, all of us uh, uh, care about our health. Uh, uh, poor people select uh, what they, they, they can afford, buying in, uh, not uh, what is are environmentally friendly necessarily. And in 2015, um, a new environmental agenda was put forward by the United Nations. Uh, I remember all of those environmental goals. Uh, and uh, uh, sustainable development uh, is about business. Uh, 
And in Russia, we have lots of positive examples uh, where businesses um, knowing about uh, their social responsibility are uh, getting engaged uh, into such activities uh, at the regional level, at the higher national level. Uh, maybe such cases uh, are still uh, rare, but nevertheless, um, we are tilting more towards our economy. And this is why on the outskirts uh, we have the social uh, sphere, but we need to put them closer together. But there are examples. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mikhail. Well, dear friends, our next uh, question um, uh, uh, was covered by uh, old Doug, but nevertheless, uh, what about us? Uh, we're representatives uh, of uh, civil societies, uh, we're NGOs. So how do we start uh, uh, better cooperating uh, on this very urgent um, environmental and climate agenda? What practices do you have? What ideas do you have? How can we strengthen uh, our cooperation uh, here in uh, Russia and uh, European Union? Please raise your hands uh, if you wish to respond uh, or write your comments in the chat. Just attract my attention and I will give the floor to you. Oh, Doug, yes, I can see your hand. Please go ahead. I can give the floor to others. I don't want uh, to be your permanent speaker. I don't want to take uh, others' time. But uh, uh, there's Ralph. Uh, Ralph is signaling to me. Okay, very well. Please go ahead. Well, of course, uh, there's a wide field uh, for the cooperation. Uh, um, and of course, uh, Russia should be cooperating with the rest of the world uh, uh, better. And... Uh, and more. There's deficit of this cooperation. Uh, I know that uh, in many other countries, uh, well, the civil society is more integrated uh, into this uh, global uh, movement. Uh, I do not want to call it a fight, uh, but uh, it's a global attempt to, to stop the crisis. And uh, speaking of very specific things, uh, there are such uh, things, and I believe that uh, they should accompany us. Uh, there are lots of important things that we can do together at uh, uh, high and uh, low level. Of course, uh, uh, Europe needs uh, more energy, uh, despite uh, uh, the fact that coal, uh, oil, and gas will not be uh, uh, imported into Europe uh, from Russia in the near future. And uh, speaking of green uh, types of energy, hydrogen, for instance, uh, most likely uh, such resources will come uh, from Russia to European Union. Uh, it will be much uh, cheaper than to bring them uh, from Saudi Arabia because there are pipelines uh, coming from Russia to Europe. Uh, and of course, NGOs uh, have to be active in this area. Let's work together with governmental entities and uh, agencies. Uh, let's uh, say, uh, um, uh, promote uh, green types of fuel. This is a new field. For us, uh, it's going to be a brand new discussion for us. And we need pilot projects that... Uh, uh, going to be done by uh, conflicting partners. Um, and we need uh, this watch function here as well. In, industrial uh, partners uh, should be involved. Uh, uh, in our country and in Russia, we just, uh, at the beginning of this process, uh, we are just about to realize that we need such uh, efforts. Uh, in some uh, areas, uh, Russia is even more advanced uh, than Germany. I'm talking about, say, steel or aluminum. Yes, thank you. Yes, I can see comments uh, from Lubov in the chat. Uh, she is saying that uh, we need uh, more conferences like this one. I agree with you, Lubov. Thank you very much for this conference. Uh, Ralph uh, stretched out his hand. Yes, please go ahead, Ralph. Your microphone is off. Um, I can follow up um, the, the ideas Kaspar was uh, then introducing. I think if, if I'm looking to this conference, the, the EU uh, Skolkovo conference on climate change and uh, climate transition, I think this is a, a, a very interesting experience. I listened to uh, several 
Dan panels for, in, as far as I know, this is the first uh, attempt in this dimension, so comprehensive in topics and issues, and also with such a variety of speakers, of actors uh, from, from the business community, from think tanks, uh, from the public uh, institutions. Uh, my feeling is that uh, this could be a starting point for a much more intense and serious um, German-European-Russian dialogue um, on uh, greening down our economies, especially, of course, the huge challenge Russia is facing um, changing its uh, totally fossil fuel dependent uh, e e economy, its business model based on coal, oil, and gas. You know, if you're looking uh, to to Russian exports, it's two thirds. It's it's fossil fossil fuels, uh, uh, state revenues. So uh, this is uh, really an, an enormous. A challenge to find constructive ways um, to uh, reduce the dependency from, from fossil fuels and move forward um, to uh, a new type of uh, green economy based on not only renewable energies, uh, um, it's also uh, natural or the biological uh, sources and so on and so forth. So I think we, we should try to create a framework for exchange of uh, the experience and, and, and knowledge um, and uh, uh, pushing forward the, the, the idea, concept of a, of a green deal for, for, for Russia. Um, of course, you, uh, the, the Russian civil society, uh, has to be in the driver's seat. Uh, we only can try to, to support you and uh, to, to pro provide some um, experience and, uh, and advice also on specific issues like how to introduce kind of green tax reform in Russia, uh, at a uh, cap and trade system for CO2 or kind of CO2 taxes. So it's a very rich menu of uh, topics and um, also political instruments uh, which have to be addressed uh, if we really are serious about um, moving forward to kind of climate neutral economy. And there's a specific format between Germany and Russia, uh, a civil society dialogue, it's called the Petersburg Dialogue. Um, it was introduced by uh, Chancellor Schröder and uh, Mr. Putin uh, 15 years ago or so. Um, and there's a working group on ecological modernization within the Petersburg Dialogue. And if you are interested, all uh, the, the environmental NGOs and, and initiatives um, in Russia, please let me know. Uh, we would try to introduce you into um, this working group, uh, which could become a kind of platform for the cooperation uh, between uh, Russian and uh, German environmental NGOs. Thank you, Rolf. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for very specific proposals. Um, we still have time uh, to answer a number of questions. Uh, in chat, we have several questions. Uh, Lubov um, is suggesting that uh, we provide uh, help uh, to each other in terms of uh, raising awareness uh, at the international level uh, regarding different uh, problems in different uh, regions. Um, Oldag uh, says uh, that it's important uh, to promote uh, exchanges uh, among different uh, regions um, um, on the subject of uh, climate changes. It is very important. Thank you. And we have several other hands. Uh, Mikhail Babenko, please go ahead. Yes, thank you. Uh, some of the ideas uh, have been covered already, and I would like to mention that European Union is uh, um, uh, uh, far ahead of uh, Russia and uh, their understanding of uh, the climate ag agenda. 
uh, al- although uh, we are quite advanced as well, especially in comparison with our eastern uh, neighbors. Uh, of course, we have to ni- unite. Uh, uh, first of all, we have to unite here in uh, Russia. We are part of the open market, the Russian economy, and uh, um, if uh, we um, if uh, we try to solve only our domestic issues, uh, will be of no interest uh, to the global uh, market. Of course, we're dependent on the global economy, and we need uh, to organize uh, uh, our uh, markets. Uh, we don't want to lose markets, and we will lose markets if we do not uh, become a green economy. Thank you very much. Arshak, the floor is yours. Uh, yes, I fully agree with uh, the previous uh, speakers, and when I traveled to Berlin, I noticed that uh, younger activists, uh, they uh, are a bridge um, between uh, everyone. Uh, I attended the global strike uh, in Berlin. I remember uh, WWF was there, Greenpeace was there, the situation in Russia where every NGO thinks that uh, uh, they're involved in a particular area. Well, this approach doesn't work in a new war because all the issues are interconnected. Um, activists uh, play a special role in this work. Uh, we organized uh, Fridays uh, in uh, Krasnoyarsk. Um, remember our uh, uh, Black Sky uh, uh, mode um, and uh, we organized activities around uh, Baikal uh, and I, f- I guess uh, we have to unite. Uh, uh, all uh, NGOs uh, should uh, unite and uh, do things all together. We organized many things together with Greenpeace and it was wonderful. I should mention many um, uh, political uh, issues, uh, lots of restrictions that NGOs are facing and we have to discuss such uh, constraints. Uh, there is a, a law on uh, foreign agents and we know uh, quote unquote to foreign uh, NGOs. Uh, I remember the uh, Alexandra Korolova case. Such cases have to be discussed at the international level. Uh, we cannot uh, protect the environment uh, and our activists uh, if we're being uh, pursued. Uh, these are very important challenges. And uh, uh, when, uh, for instance, uh, there were fires in Australia, uh, then uh, the entire world. Um, helped Australia in a humanitarian uh, uh, way. But when uh, things happen in Russia, there are no such uh, tools. Uh, uh, Think of uh, the permafrost uh, thaw. It is an international issue, not just a Russian uh, domestic issue. International institutions should have access to uh, Russia. Otherwise, we will not be able to cope with the international crisis, global crisis. Thank you. Helena. Uh, piggybacking on what our colleagues just mentioned, I would like to say that if we talk about the interaction uh, uh, between international NGOs, uh, then um, we have to mention uh, such a thing as global processes so where we can uh, exercise our cooperation, uh, um, the fossil economy uh, modification. Well, the role of NGOs uh, is to redirect financial uh, streams and their flows, um, pay special attention uh, of the public uh, to such things. Uh, We should redirect everybody's attention to the green uh, sectors of the economy. We uh, have uh, to cooperate with banks, uh, for instance, uh, and uh, direct uh, the activities to this agenda, we have to cooperate with uh, all sorts of funds uh, and uh, investors, and uh, that uh, should uh, be very uh, effective uh, cooperation. Green watching uh, is uh, a great uh, movement that many companies. Uh, have been using. Let's uh, raise awareness among many about this movement. Quite often, such things are done at the level of uh, global organizations. Um, There are working examples uh, of uh, climate courts. Uh, Imagine uh, there are people who who, uh, suffered uh, major losses uh, due to to the climate uh, crisis, and they turn to court. Uh, And in this uh, uh, situation, uh, NGOs can help uh, um, uh, with their communication, uh, for instance. uh, And of course, uh, such cases um, uh, can uh, become uh, even more public uh, if uh, we promote them at the international level. 
And uh, speaking of uh, cooperation inside uh, Russia, here I would like uh, to uh, support uh, Mikhail, uh, who talked about uh, markets and how the market should develop. But it's very important for all of us uh, uh, to unite and uh, promote uh, the green course and uh, uh, show to the government uh, that there is a dependence between our economy and our environment. We need to restructure all sectors of our economy and we have to keep um, sustainable development uh, in mind. Uh, we have to work uh, in a consolidated uh, manner and I can think of a specific example. I uh, told you about it uh, and we invite you to take uh, part uh, in the activities of our green uh, platform. Well, lots of measures and uh, we promote different measures and we discuss those measures uh, at different uh, levels, uh, thus uh, putting together a roadmap. Thank you very much. Ksenia, you wanted to say something, please? Yes, I have a very brief comment of technical nature. Uh, civil civil uh, forum of Russia and uh, United, uh, United Europe, there's such a forum. Uh, and uh, they uh, uh, welcome different agendas, not uh, only environmental agenda, lots of organizations uh, that are part of that organization. So it's just a good platform to look uh, for good uh, partners and launch uh, mutual projects. Um, thank you, thank you very much, Xenia. Well, dear friends, so one more question is coming from our audience. In what areas uh, we have to build the dialogue uh, between NGOs and uh, regulators um, in terms of uh, Russian Federation environmental policy? So what about the cooperation uh, interaction between NGOs and governmental authorities? Please go ahead. Who would like uh, to say anything about it? Yes, Mikhail, go ahead. I would like to start. Well, the uh, uh, theme uh, that has been discussed this uh, year is a very uh, uh, relevant. My mood uh, is being geometric. Uh, I keep on talking about uh, figures, uh, triangle. Uh, well, uh, social economic development. Um, uh, what is it? Uh, industrial development. Uh, uh, climate uh, uh, climate issues. Uh, so uh, the programs that are being adopted, uh, that is some sort of uh, a black box. Uh, and uh, sometimes it is a black uh, box uh, where we see two parties, uh, businesses and uh, the government. Um, and on the output, uh, we read uh, uh, papers, we read documents uh, that um, are of a big surprise to all of us. Uh, so the public uh, should um, become uh, a full-pledged uh, participant of the process. Uh, otherwise, it's a no-go situation. That's uh, number one. Number two, still uh, we experience a major problem with uh, awareness uh, and uh, general understanding at the level of the government uh, uh, regarding what um, environmental challenges uh, are. So we need uh, to enlighten people. Um, then we uh, uh, have to monitor what's going on on our planet. Uh, we clearly understand uh, that uh, if we didn't have any social uh, networks, uh, we wouldn't uh, uh, find out anything about uh, the Timir tragedy here. Um, the indigenous uh, communities, uh, for instance, uh, are the heads, uh, the arms, and uh, uh, the uh, the legs, uh, if you will, uh, that uh, generate information uh, for us. Um, uh, and of course, we need cooperation with the government as well. Without uh, uh, this cooperation, businesses will not be able to develop uh, either. So uh, the three parties have to uh, sit down and uh, start discussing all these uh, things. Um, and another major idea is that uh, it is not the ultimate goal to sit down at the negotiations table. Uh, everything that we've been discussing uh, today, uh, well, those are risks uh, that are present uh, in our uh, lives. Uh, and uh, risks can be threats and can be you know, possibilities, opportunities. Um, 
So I believe that uh, geos can uh, reveal the sources of uh, risks, and at the same time, we can find uh, new opportunities. Uh, uh, so uh, we should focus on those uh, three areas. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mikhail. Yes, Yelena, go ahead. I fully agree with what Mikhail just mentioned. And just to add, I would like to mention that, well, we hear lots of uh, statements um, uh, at top levels. Uh, the climate uh, uh, changes, uh, we recognize it, uh, but uh, all those are just statements. Um, low carbon a strategy actually uh, in the light of the strategy there will be even more emissions of uh, of uh, uh, of bad stuff so to say and again uh, if you're not a connoisseur of the subject you have no clue what is planned uh, what is being planned and um, um, I guess that it's very important for all of us uh, to pass uh, the the right information uh, to the public uh, because we would like to monitor the situation and we would like uh, to take into account uh, all uh, opinions uh, regarding what is going on and we have to do everything we can in order to lower the emissions in different uh, sectors. There are lots of proposals regarding this process. Uh, well, the only thing we need to do is to um, to, uh, um, ad to to adopt uh, all these uh, measures. The longer we wait, uh, the greater uh, the negative effect, uh, negative aftermath. And uh, do we need to work out mitigation plans? Uh, I know that in different regions, um, uh, this uh, uh, this. Uh, uh, a theme is uh, under discussed uh, or well people sometimes in some regions don't get compensations even uh, after they suffer losses uh, so there are no major programs uh, aimed at such things uh, uh, thank you very much Yelien, uh, well dear friends uh, I have to say that um, uh, our time is up. Uh, imagine we've been uh, discussing things for two hours and we didn't uh, notice uh, how time flew. I would like to thank the organizers of this session. Thank you very much uh, for providing this platform to all of us. Thank you for allowing us uh, to speak up. Uh, thank you for letting us uh, see each other in Zoom. I would like to thank our wonderful experts, our wonderful speakers uh, who represent a different uh, countries and different uh, regions of our planet. I would like to thank uh, all our audience for your responses and for your attention. And uh, I've been thinking that um, despite the fact that um, we are separated, uh, nevertheless, uh, thanks to all of your stories and uh, thanks to your interactions, uh, we've managed to uh, um, uh, make uh, several trips. Uh, we traveled uh, to Brussels, uh, Berlin, uh, Krasnoyarsk, uh, Khabarovsk, and uh, many other places. And uh, uh, we had a chance uh, to take a look uh, at uh, the local and very specific uh, problems. And we discussed international problems as well, in addition to the uh, geographic uh, travel, we had the uh, diplomatic uh, uh, travel as well. We talked about the activities of NGOs. Uh, we thought about uh, what uh, else uh, could be done. We talked about uh, governmental level, um, the expert level. We talked about uh, the ones who siege castles. Uh, we uh, talked uh, about uh, a fish, we talked about monitoring, we talked about uh, legislation, uh, we talked uh, about uh, how NGOs uh, can uh, function together and how NGOs can uh, learn from each other. All of us are capable of learning new things uh, from each other. And uh, uh, we are yet to learn uh, how, thanks to our uh, cooperation, we can... Uh, uh, contribute uh, to the resolution of uh, the climate uh, problem that is uh, boundless. Uh, we live on the same uh, planet. Uh, we are residents of one planet, and it's uh, very important that we discuss such things and we work together. Let's work together in the future. Thank you very much, dear friends. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.
Bye-bye. All the best.